doing a quick video on uh, the Saturday morning spray for the plants in the aquaponics system. We make a uh, compost tea brew uh, using this little Vortex tea brewer. Uh, it's reasonably simple. Got an air pump. Air pump goes down. Pumps water, or pumps air I should say, into the tube, which is connected to the bottom. So this pipe basically runs from the bottom of the tank to the top of the tank uh, using the air lift. So it's using air to lift water up into the tank. So this one's been brewing for 24 hours, which is about right. It's, uh, can't really see much in there at the moment. It's all the bubbles, but inside it's swirling around. So the water's like when you empty a sink. There's a vortex, so uh, heavy, fast spiraling water. Gets sucked to the bottom, pumped back up the top. And it comes out. You really can't see anything through all the bubbles, but I'll show you later how it kind of basically works. And uh, this cord in the side here is a heater. It's an aquarium heater. Uh, it's keeping this tank at about 25 degrees, which is what bacteria needs to breathe. So compost tea is basically creating uh, like a warm brew of all different sorts of additives you can add. Um, in this one, I just used the worm farm, which has got lots of uh, horse manure, worm castings. I don't know, there's a couple of thousand worms in that one. Uh, I dig out a couple of scoops, so about three or four hundred grams. Uh, you know, like say handful wise, two or three handfuls of soil go straight in from the worm farm. The most um, composted um, part. So, the, you know, with the most worm poo in it. Uh, it goes into water. I use about a third of this water is aquaponic tank water. So I fill up about this much aquaponic tank water. The rest is just dechlorinated tap water. So I let the water sit for about 48 hours. Or this one sat for about four days. Uh, so first went in normal water to about here. Um, let it sit there for four days, turn a little pump on to aerate it to get rid of the chlorine faster. Then I filled up a a third of it with um, the water from the aquaponic tank. So it's already full of lots of bacteria and nutrient. From the worm farm you get a hell of a lot of bacteria and uh, this basically is breeding bacteria. The bacteria which is uh, used to spray on the plants, the underside of the leaves. The underside of the leaves have stomata which is basically like their mouth. So if you imagine my hands a leaf, top side's covered in a heavy waxes, things like that. It's got the cuticle of the leaf. Uh, the underside of the leaf has little holes all over it, little mouths all over it, and they basically just suck up anything you give them. Uh, they suck up oxygen, and uh, or CO2, turn it to oxygen, uh, photosynthesis, all that kind of stuff. So um, basically this spray is sprayed in the, into the mouths of the leaves, um, the underside of the leaf, and it makes them grow strong, gives them all sorts of nutrients. Uh, the basic recipe that I use for this Apart from the water was blackstrap molasses, unsulfured molasses, so it's a sugar. Uh, I put about 100 grams, 100 mils of blackstrap molasses into the mix. Uh, so the water, blackstrap molasses, about three or 400 grams of the worm poo and castings and there's cow poo and all horse poo and everything else in there. Um, I used a bit of sulfide acid, um, which is just a, it's just basically a, um, you know, an acid that uh, helps the process. Uh, the blackstrap molasses that goes in feeds the bacteria, so all the good bacteria that's sitting in here, uh, the sugars, uh, they eat them. So the blackstrap molasses is food for them for the 24 hours. Uh, also using the oxygenated water, um, as most bacteria will drown, just like us. You can't just throw them in water and let them sit there. Um, we'll lose a lot of good bacteria. So the air pump's keeping everything alive. The water, uh, the aquarium heaters, getting it up to about 20 to 22 degrees so the bacteria can thrive and after 24 hours uh, the juice that's in there is just full of goodness uh, so I'll just run you through uh, basically what I do using two buckets a 190 micron strainer so the strainer basically gets all the gunk out of it and uh, goes into a spray bowl and then it's sprayed on the plants so I'll just run through the process very quickly so the first step We've done the brew, 24 hours of brewing. Uh, next, I let the let it sit for about five minutes with the air pump off, so everything's settling. Uh, the tap's just a bit higher than the bottom, so most of the heavy stuffs will sit below the tap. And uh, we just basically get the brew started. And I just use a pretty standard 
kitchen filter, which as you can see now the brew's pretty settled. Not too many big chunks are coming out, but the tea's a beautiful colour. So just like tea should be. So it looks like something you actually drink. I don't advise drinking it. It wouldn't be very good for human consumption, I'm sure, because sure, it's full of bacteria, microbes and all sorts of stuff. So um, this brew, I'm just going to fill up about 5-7 litres in a spray container. Um, so before I can do that, I want to get any heavy, heavy solids out, which at the moment, as you can see, I let it sit for about five minutes only, and I'm not really getting many solids coming out of this, so it's a good thing. It's uh, less mucking around just by letting it sit there. If you don't give it the five minutes, this strainer would be full of junk, just, you know, all bits of soil and worms that were in the cask and all the other stuff, so we've pretty much filtered enough. That's uh, enough for what I need. So I take this bucket and I want to strain it with this 190 micron filter. So that's what we'll do next. Alright, so put the uh, filter directly on top of the bottle that I'm going to spray from. It sits there good enough as you can see, a bit missed, doesn't matter. There's plenty of brew there, there's uh, more than I need. That'll all go on the veggie gardens and places. I'd never tip it directly into our aquaponic system. This is all just spray to leaves, so filters I just bought, I think it was um, four for a dollar from a paint shop, and uh, this filter I've used about, I don't know, ten times. It's only paper, but you just let it dry out, wash it and dry it out, and uh, this one now I'll probably chuck because it's used so many times, but uh, they're pretty economical filters. They are disposable, but again, you can overuse them just many times, and uh, they're cheap as, so, you know, 25 cents each, something like that, and uh, multiple uses out of them, which is great. So I've got my tea, can't really see it in there, it looks pretty dark, looks more like coffee now, but uh, it is that kind of tea colour you can see coming out before. So now we just strap on uh, the backpack and go and give everything a spray. Oh, that funky sound you could hear a second ago, it's, uh, we use Sonics. There's a little speaker over there, which is beaming into the garden beds, and it's music and plants. Everyone's always heard that plants like classical music and don't like rock and roll and things like that. Uh, so part of what we do in uh, the aquacrop system, and it's more of a test trial than anything, is um, seeing if the plants, you know, like their music. So this is played for about 45 minutes uh, before we spray. So this music's been on for about half an hour now in this greenhouse, and uh, it feeds into both these greenhouses. There's a greenhouse next door and the one here with the anchored raft. Uh, I might even turn that down because it's pretty annoying. But it's basically a sonic, that sonic noise you, you can hear uh, activates the plant stomatas. So the stomatas are basically the mouth of the plant underneath the leaf. And, uh, you know, it's activated by CO2. Uh, if the plants get a whiff of CO2 under the leaf, they open the stomatas right up <coughs> and uh, drag in the CO2, turn it into oxygen. They also open it up in different light conditions, like this is early morning, uh, so it's best to spray plants early morning, late afternoon. Uh, so we put our tea, and I just come in and give everything a good spray underneath the leaves. It'll also blow off any pests or anything else that's uh, around them. All these plants are pretty happy, there's only a few ants on them and that kind of thing. So the idea is to get your compost tea right up and underneath all the leaves. And uh, the end result we're finding uh, from these plants is that they seem to have a lot more flower buds on them than the ones we're not giving music and spray to. Uh, like an example, this is more of a seeding raising shed, but the, say, the cucumber, there's flowers, multiple flowers on every node uh, on both plants. So the amount of fruit coming off these will be quite substantial. Uh, and I'll just go to another area. Like anything, this isn't a pure science experiment. Crazy kids everywhere. Uh, it's not a true science experiment because they're in a greenhouse, alright, so it's a little bit different, but let's say compare it to plant planted exactly the same time. This was brought up in the greenhouse um, next to its brothers in there and uh, not one flower on it. No, still no flowers and it's quite small. Uh, obviously a greenhouse, you know, that will affect the growth rate, and, but there is a massive difference between the 
the plants that are getting the music and the sonic noises. Uh, the sonic noises are full of all sorts of stuff, bird chirps and crickets and things like that. Um, but the difference is amazing because those cucumbers have only been outside for about two weeks and uh, they were all about the same size when they were planted. Uh, yet you can see, you know, the amount of flowers this thing's putting out, they're just everywhere and they're still growing more. Like every node has four or five new flower buds on them as well. So, you know, it's hard to really say or prove what's going on. Uh, again, the greenhouse will affect. Uh, but even tomatoes are now flowering out of season, uh, you know, which is, they shouldn't be doing anything, but uh, they all seem to be quite happy, so weird things that happen around here. Speaker playing cricket, birds and some music to the plants. Uh, the idea is it's activating the somata on the plants, which is their mouths. It's opening them right up as, as you know, basically as wide as you could get your mouth. And then we're spraying on a organic compost tea on the underside of the leaves and the somatas or their mouths soak it all up. So gross different, you know, between the different plants is chronic difference. And uh, again, this isn't a greenhouse. Uh, you know, if I have more greenhouses, I'm going to do the exact same experiment, uh, yet do it in both greenhouse so I can really see whether it's just because it's in the greenhouse or whether it's outside. But like I said, like these two weeks ago weren't flowering, they're quite small. Uh, and they've had three compost sprays. And uh, well, this is the third, uh, coming onto the third week. And uh, these things are just going crazy. They're, they're putting on an inch to two inches a day. Uh, you know, it's, um, I'll put a time lapse camera on these ones just to give you an idea in another video how fast they're growing. And uh, yeah, so the wacky thing is compost tea, weird music with sonic noises to make the plants all active and happy. And uh, you know, that's what you seem to get is radical flowering and uh, really fast plant growth. So uh, yeah, it's just another quick video. All the plants have their uh, spray now. They're all looking happy. Uh, really important note though, this is all bacteria and microbes and whatnot. So whenever you make a tea brew or anything like this, wash everything out really well. Now I'm going to drain all the rest of the brew out. Uh, it'll go on a veggie garden over there, uh, which loves it. And uh, But you have to clean everything. Make it See inside it's all covered in gunk and crap. So generally it's just wash it down with uh, you know, tap water and use a peroxide or rubbing alcohol or whatever. And I just flush the system through because uh, you can breed moulds and all sorts of bacteria you really don't want around. So always make sure doing anything like this, you wash your hands yourself, don't breathe it in, and make sure everything's clean, all the buckets, the sprayer, filters and everything else. And, uh, make sure they're 100 percent clean. Uh, before you just let them sit around for the next brew. You know, I brew about once a week, so now I'll go and uh, dump the rest of this and uh, give it all a bit of a wash up. So yeah, it's always important to uh, hygiene with anything like this. Keep it as clean as you can all the time and you won't breed any nasties. There you have it. Just doing the final flush. We'll uh, dump this water again, but uh, I just wanted to show you the vortex tour and how it works. So it's a bit of water out here. See the tube under there, the uh, water gets pushed along the tube, <coughs> up and back around, all done with the air lift. So it pumps air in, pushes the water up, spins around, mixes it all together, and uh, job done. Compost tea brewing with some wacky music. <laughs>